Hi everyone, my name is Rupert Haynes. I'm Vice President of Finance for the UK at Oracle. I'd like to very much welcome you to this our final webcast in the current series of, of the Office of Finance. Today we're going to be sharing some preliminary results of new research sponsored by Oracle and undertaken by SEMA on what the next generation of the finance function looks like. Remember, this is only a preview. There will be a final research report that will be available in November with more detail in it. This research looks specifically at how companies are monitoring and measuring intangibles within their business and how the role of the CFO is evolving in this increasingly digital economy that we all live in. It looked at what the KPIs currently being measured tell us and whether there's any shift in the dynamics of the C-suite collaboration. But before we start, just quickly on the housekeeping front, Please note that during this webcast, all your lines will be on mute. You will be able to ask questions if you just use the Q&A widget that you should see at the bottom of your screen. Then we'll collate those at the end and try and answer as many as possible. So today, I'm joined by Peter Simons, Development and Innovation Specialist at SEMA. Peter is a SEMA member who had over 30 years experience in business before joining SEMA as a member of staff in 2006. He's now the technical specialist in the Applied Research Unit in SEMA's Education Department. Peter, I'd very much like to welcome you and thanks again to you and SEMA for driving this research. Thank you very much. It's a very interesting project. So before we share some of the key findings from our SEMA research, let's have a quick look at the backdrop of today's digital landscape. To set some context around this, many analyst firms are talking about how digital technologies are disrupting every function and every industry. In fact, according to IDC predictions from last year, quoting, by, 2003, sorry, by 2018, one third of the top 20 market share leaders will be significantly disrupted by new competitors that use the third platform to create new services and business models. Now, we all see this day-to-day -day in, in, in many sectors. I mean, if we look at hospitality, you've already got Airbnb. On transportation, on the taxi front, you've got Uber or Halo or companies such as those. And on payment systems, you have Square and PayPal, for example. But one of the major impacts on the finance function is how they, how they the finance function, react to these digital technologies like cloud, big data, social, and mobile. These are all reshaping the competitive landscape and transforming how companies create value. Let's find out how value is being created in today's digital age and the role the CFO and the finance departments can play in creating value with digital technologies. So on this uh, slide, we talk a little bit about intangible assets. So why focus on intangibles? Well, again, so looking at some research, some research done by Open Matters in Deloitte in 2014 looked at the way that value is being created in today's digital age. The findings are quite striking. Back in 1975, tangible assets such as plant, property, equipment constituted about 80% of total corporate value on the S&P 500. Today, those tangible assets constitute just less than 20% of corporate value compared to 80% of the value now created by intangible assets. And by intangible assets, we're talking things like human capital, customers, intellectual property. What does this all mean for us? Well, CFOs and their finance teams need to adapt to this new world. And one key way is to embrace digitally enabled business models and leverage the new technologies which helps them stay ahead of the competition. CFOs using previous generations of the technology are putting their company's management and shareholders at risk, generating lower levels of performance and enterprise value. The more digitally and, and maybe big data savvy CFOs are spending their organization's resources on building and leveraging their intangible assets, powered by today's technologies. All that said, um, we're now going to have a little bit more detailed look at the research that SEMA has been driving for us. So, Peter. Would you like to give us an overview of the research so that our audience can understand the scope and what you were seeking from this survey? Yes, thank you, Rupert. Firstly, let me say that we, we share with Oracle this, the view that the digital age will transform 
business models. And one of the things that will happen when, with business models is that things will become commoditized in the sense that there will be a less personal touch. People, so many things will be automated. This means that the things that will distinguish one business from another are going to be the intangibles because we'll do many of the same things the same way. Therefore, we're very keen to find out how businesses create value in the digital age and what is the role of the management accountant. That's what we set out to find out with this survey. As you can see from the slide, we had 744 respondents to the survey. And by company size, there's almost 20% in each of the five bands we were looking at, starting with companies with a turnover of over 100 million. There was a good spread by country too. You can see the United States and the UK well represented. There were 34 countries in all provided respondents. So we've got a good spread that way. We've also got a good spread in terms of the roles that people played. Um, they're largely in the finance sector, but there are chief operating officers, something like 20% of the people there are in other senior CFC roles. And um, we've complemented the quantitative research with qualitative research in the form of 10 in-depth interviews with um, senior finance personnel. So we think it's a pretty good story, or a pretty good study. We have what we call an organizing framework. That is the way we think about the world and so the things we want to question. Our understanding is that the role of finance has been expanding through finance transformation, as we've been calling it, for many years. It's spreading from producing the accounts to becoming more influential in how information is applied in the business. In fact, what we say is that it's about improving decision making. And we use this, what my American friends call the bubbles diagram, to illustrate this. It starts with data, and in fairness at the moment with finance is mostly financial data. That is used to inform reports, so we're producing information. Then we're applying analysis, trying to find insights, and hoping to influence decisions. And if we don't manage to influence decisions, at least we influence how they are implemented, because we provide the budgets and the forecasts which are used for that purpose. And we provide the performance measures so that they are managed through the impact. And for many years, we've had almost a monopoly on providing the information that's used to manage the business. But that's about to change. We in finance have been shifting the allocation of resources to the people in finance from traditional accounting type roles to more FP&A, financial planning analysis roles, and more performance management type roles. But still, it seems our focus is still mainly on financial data. There may be untapped potential in enterprise data and new forms of big data. When we looked, when we, we, the key question we asked was about what are the drivers of value? And we were told the top five drivers of value were as follows. Customer satisfaction, quality of people, customer relationships, the quality of business processes, and the reputation of the brand. Now, that's very interesting because they're all intangibles. Mm -hmm. When we talk about how we manage a business, we talk about the need to balance. We've been using the term balanced scorecard for quite a while. We have here what we call the balanced um, value chain. And what, what this is supposed to illustrate is that for a company to survive and thrive, it needs to balance both how it's performing today and how it's building a legacy for the future. It's all too easy when times are hard to cut back on the investment for the future. That's where the intangibles lie. That's where you've got the brand, you the company's values, those kind of intangibles in its intellectual property, and how its innovation and transformation managed. Now, in order to manage the business, we need to have KPIs to manage every step along the way, and we need to find new sources of information to inform those KPIs. Thanks, Peter. That's a very helpful oversight. So in the research you've done, what were the top KPIs that you found that companies were measuring? Well, we did find them. We found actually eight. Naturally, finance comes to the fore. People are looking at return on capital investors. They're also looking at the customer experience, employee engagement and retention, employee productivity, the customer pipeline, people managing sales, of course, competitor activity, data quality, and the brand awareness 
and equity in the brand, brand equity. So they were the top eight KPIs. And what we tried to do then was kind of say, well, hang on, we said there are five value drivers. Are there KPIs that relate to those value drivers? Mm -hmm. And you can see that we did find there are KPIs that relate to those value drivers. So it does seem that people are managing the intangibles, which is good news. Right. But what does it mean for the role of finance? Well, when we looked at areas of responsibility and we asked who in the company is responsible for the following, what we find is that, say, with information technology there at the top of the list, it's the CIO, the Chief Information Officer, who is most, most likely responsible. However, finance was second rated there. Corporate strategy, it was the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer. But again, finance was second rated. Digital transformation, well, that's the CIO again, but finance again is the second highest rated. So what we see in this is that in almost every category, if finance is not taking the lead, which they are in risk management, financial planning analysis, and shared service centers, they tend to be the second. The exception is human resources. We don't seem to have much to do with human resources. Okay. So that's who, who was responsible for these areas. The next question is, who provides the information? Mm -hmm. And this has a slightly different picture, because it looks like finance are responsible for financial type information. So they are the ones most responsible. And I goofed there. I should have said the darker blue is the form of the highest responsibility. But we're all accountants listening, and we see it's the biggest number, too. Anyway, accountants are the ones most likely to be responsible for financial analysis, accounting and performance measures, analysis of business unit performance, and sometimes and, and the analysis to support operation decisions. Mm -hmm. However, this is the amazing thing. They're not the ones providing the non-financial strategic analysis, not the first or second, not even the third. They're, they're not the ones providing the um, non-financial measures um, or leading indicators of performance. They're not the ones providing the measures of progress towards strategy. See, that could be a problem. They don't seem to be, it seems the business units themselves are responsible for that. And of course, yeah. another problem there is social environmental impact. So it seems that finance have a broad role Good overview of the business, but they're not necessarily responsible for providing the information that's needed. Okay. How does that reflect what happens for you, Rupert? Well, not really. And I just have to admit, Peter, it's one of the areas I found surprising in these results, actually, was just to kind of go on from the point you made, is that the areas of CFO's responsibility and finances engagement, or perhaps lack of engagement and decision support and performance management was a bit of a surprise to me and kind of reflected maybe more of a traditional view of finance than I would have expected. Um, as you said, they, they tend to show that finance focuses mainly on the financial measures um, and not as strong an engagement as maybe we're expecting in, in these uh, non-financial intangibles. Well, um, and, and that's but, one of the things but, that happens with yeah. quantitative research is you, you get what the average looks like. You don't get what the leaders are doing. So that's why we have to do the qualitative research as well. But it's absolutely. Just, there's, room, there's room for us to catch up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And but what's also clear is that there clearly is a remit in all areas for finance. Um, but as I say, we're not, obviously maybe not grasping the new opportunities yet as much as we could. I mean, I think in, in my experience at Oracle and from speaking to some of our customers, that there are some key reasons we do need to shift our focus as finance in this modern age. Um, the first one is that the kind of, with the proliferation of data, there's an awful lot of data out there, and, and everyone in the business can become their own data analyst to a degree uh, with these new tools and and, and views on it. I think the first thing we need to ensure is that when they're doing this, that the data that they're kind of feeding these systems that are fundamentally using is accurate. And I, and I think we have a role to play there. I think the next thing is that, again, with the proliferation of data, it's very important that we see that data is put into context. Um, I think anyone with, with so much data and information around, it's pretty easy for someone to find a particular analysis that'll make something look good or make their hypothesis look good. Um, but is it relevant is the question, is it put in context? As I think as independent business judges, we're ideally helped to place, sort of, we're ideally placed to help make that judgment. I think the last couple of things I'd say is that, you know, again, for, for modern finance to stay relevant, I think modern businesses, and, and certainly at at Oracle, we're, we're more led on current real-time data and much less on historic data, which was probably finance's old hunting ground. So to kind of stay relevant in the business, 
we do need to become adept in this new area, which does step outside of where our traditional boundaries were. That's the other thing I'd say is that given our mandate, which is, which is clear in this research as well, finance has a very wide mandate, we do have the ability to drive it, these additional analyses that the business might require in making its decisions. And we need to, again, we, we're ideally placed to make sure that the data is very relevant and the business is making its decisions on, based on relevant data, based on real-time data, and based on accurate data. Um, so, Peter, so what, what are your thoughts on kind of where the role of finance should be? Well, ag again, we, we concur. Um, the, the way we see it is that this picture we had of um, the role of the accountant in decision making, it, it remains sound except that finance doesn't really have a credible role to be the sole provider of information in the business. And it can't really claim to be the data scientists because some of the information in the business is beyond what we're able to do in terms of deriving the analytical insights. So we have a sort of business partnering kind of role to play. Where others have the data, which is relevant to decision making, they may well provide it and do some analysis of it. But when it's assembled and validated by finance, it gives us credibility and it can be taken into the decision making process. Likewise, data scientists don't tend to have the business overview that accountants do. So while they can convert data into analytical insights, there's a need to translate those into commercial insights and apply them again into that decision-making process. And to, to echo what you say there, accountants have a real role to play in improving decision-making. Uh, people need to have confidence in the relevant data. They need to have due diligence applied to the analysis with a view on the value to shareholders. And, and there's a lot of um, problems there. People are inclined, can be biased in, in decision-making there. Accountants bring professional objectivity to bear. Accountants also bring the governance to the business. Um, all the, all the uh, directors share fiduciary responsibility, but as the accountants are the ones doing the external reporting. They tend to, to own that. And so finance has an opportunity to be influential as a partner to the business to improve decision-making as somebody who brings the relevant information together but it's, it requires a, a development in, in, in our skill set. Um, okay. I'll just go on there now to our summary slide, if I may. Yep, sure. Thanks, Peter. That's great. So that's very useful, and it's a great insight to have. So maybe let's, what I can do now is if we can wrap up our discussion um, before we wrap, open up to our Q&A session. Let me just some, some closing thoughts from myself and maybe hand on to Peter for some thoughts from you too. Um, so the digital age clearly represents a lot of challenges to us. I mean, I think CFOs were traditionally the monopoly supplier of management information. But the information we use today is much more diverse, more available, and more instant. Um, and what this survey is telling us is that the CFO still provides finance-related information but perhaps they don't yet significantly own these other forms of data, nor in all cases have the skills needed to do so. And to Peter's point, perhaps full ownership is never going to happen, but certainly at a greater level of involvement, it seems to be where we need to go. Um, data is becoming more and more available, and other departments in the business are supplying and interpreting new forms of information. So again, the CFO and the finance department, if we're not careful, we do risk being sidelined a little. However, I think the CFO and finance teams can and indeed must play a key role as the broker of this information used to inform the decisions and manage performance. And they can do this, again, in a couple of ways. I think the first thing is that we must provide the discipline necessary to ensure that the decision makers know that the data they're basing on the decisions on is accurate, and that's key. I think uh, finance must play a key role to ensure the analysis of this data used by the business is in context and that the data is focused on adding value to the shareholders or to the business. So there's kind of a culture of accountability, if you like, and evidence-based decision-making, rather than data just being used to justify a predetermined decision, which is, or a gut feel decision, which is something I think we really need to move away from with all the data that we now have. And I think lastly, finance does have a mandate, and it can use this mandate, a unique mandate, if you like, to work cross-departmentally and across the whole business and to actually drive new relevant information and analysis which will help the business 
ensure that decisions, again, are based on the most relevant, accurate, and timely data that's currently available so they can make, as I say, decisions with, with full knowledge of all the relevant facts. To my view, my personal view is that CFOs and the finance departments themselves must develop the digital knowledge necessary to understand the sources of data that, so that they can validate it. They need to be able to collate and contextualize that data and present it as well. So it's going to need business partnering skills and communication skills to be able to ensure that the data is, is relevant and communicated correctly as well. So on, on that note, Peter, again, what, where do you think finance sits in terms of having the relevant skill sets to drive into the future? Well, we set out, our, set out our stall to provide a qualification for accountants and business, and it does have the right core skill sets in terms of the accounting skills, the business understanding, and the analysis, analysis skills that are required to be effective business partners. But accountants are going to need to have to build on each of those. For example, if we say we've got analytical skills, it's not much use unless you have the commercial curiosity to go to figure out, well, what does work? What's driving that? What's the root cause there? And even then, it's all very well in having analytical skills and the commercial curiosity, but unless you can communicate your insights effectively and work with others, because actually more likely you're going to present an anomaly as an accountant or raise a question, and it's through collaborative working with others that you, you find insights and manage to improve performance. And that's kind of like you've got the business skills, the business understanding, but you need some kind of passion for the business to care enough to go roll up your sleeves and figure out what's happening, and you need empathy with the people in the business to have those conversations. And all the time what you're doing is you're applying your, that accountant's cynical professional objectivity, questioning, is that right? Is that a good number? And, and, and hopefully challenging the business to reach its potential. Because the digital age is going to make quite a few businesses look very different over the next few years. And it's the quality of the decision making that's going to make a difference. Okay, that's brilliant. Thanks a lot, Peter. So maybe let's now just have, we've got a little bit of time left, although not much. So maybe let's just go through some of the questions that came up through the Q&A during our discussion. So just give us a couple of seconds to collate those. Okay. So first one, Peter, for you. You say that SEMA delivers courses for the core skills. They need to build, but people need to build on those core skills. How would you suggest people do that? Well, one of the things we do wrong is we, um, we, we, we tend to call these interpersonal skills and, and use terms to make us feel like we have some social inadequacy. <laughs> it's not like that at all. We have the score, core skills that we need. It's more like um, we do need to develop our business understanding. We do, we, we, we do need to communicate better with others. But it, it, it's, it's a question of learning to work with them in a collaborative way. And it's not through courses that people learn this. It's through doing it on the job. If we can provide clarity around what the role of the business partner actually is in best practice situations, then people will be alert to how they need to develop those skills. It, it's things like getting on cross-disciplinary projects where you get the exposure to the business. Um, there was a, a guy at Rolls-Royce years ago, he used to quip that the problem with accountants was they would stay late, close the books, and go home with Hello Magazine under their arms. He just wished every now and then they'd have a glance at aeronautics today. And it's that kind of interest in the business. Um, for too many accountants traditionally, our job was done when we closed the books at the month end. Uh, I even had the experience of being an interim MD once where somebody would come along and hand me a set of accounts and say, we've done it. And I'd say, what's the story? And they'd say, oh, we haven't looked at it yet. You know, we, there aren't many accounts like that anymore, but this is what we have to do. We need to, we need to become better engaged with the business. Okay. Great. Okay. We have another question that's come in. And this question, bear with me a second. The question was, um, I, I might take this one, Peter. Has Oracle changed any of the KPIs that it measures? Um, I think it's an interesting question, a good question. So I think I'll answer that in two ways. I mean, I think firstly, um, if we, what we've done, certainly within finance, we've developed our 
uh, input and involvement in some of the existing KPIs that were being measured, and we maybe we've expanded and enhanced them. So if we look on the sales side of it, um, rather than just being kind of the forecast budgeting uh, team, we now get very much involved in looking at things like rep productivity, rep pipeline growth, uh, deal bandings, how the deals are matching to various industries, a lot of areas like that. And um, those areas, it's not that they wouldn't have been looked at before, but they certainly wouldn't have been looked at by finance and they wouldn't have been looked at real time in the way that we do now to really help drive um, the way the business reacts to those. Um, I think the second thing to say is then there are some fundamental changes in the way we, we do look at KPIs and, and some of these are driven by the, the there's a, obviously a very big move to cloud now and from our on-premise business to the cloud. So uh, as a business, we're looking at a lot more at customer-based uh, metrics, customer-based KPIs, such as customer satisfaction and customer interaction. So I think on, on both levels, there's definitely a change uh, and a move in terms of how we look at KPIs and how finance gets involved, as I say, and, and we're driving very hard as well from to get involved in those non, what we've traditionally been seen as non-finance KPIs. So I think we have a really strong role to play. Um, maybe on the next question, then maybe this might be the last one before we wrap it up. Peter, are there, are there any other interesting themes that came out of the research that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, there, 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 there are four. Um, four of them, mate. Firstly, as, as you say, uh, Rupert, um, this looks a bit old-fashioned it, 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 in the sense that um, finance don't seem to be taking on as broad a role as we've, as we've been talking about for years. And in particular, they don't seem to have the engagement with the non-financial measures that we, we, would, we would have expected them to have. Um, uh, number two is um, we... Um, we, we seem to have difficulty with intangibles, not just finance, but I think business as a whole. Um, I suspect that um, things are not being measured as well as they, they might be. I suspect we as, as, as finance personnel are not bringing the professional objectivity to bear that we might to ensure that new sources of data are being used the way they might be. Um, uh, for instance, is that um, HR skills are, are, um, are, are not measured as, as, as well as we think there might be. Or it, it, it certainly, measuring soft issues like HR skills is a problem. Another area, um, quite many companies' rhetoric about environmental concerns and social concerns, social responsibility, it seems to be an area that's probably falling between two stools. You know, it, when, when, when the answer is the CEO does it or the business does it, it probably means nobody's doing it. The CEO is going to be far too busy, and the business has other priorities too. Um, the, 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 there is further work to be done here. There are issues arising that we, we need to go out and talk to people about. Okay. That's brilliant. Thanks, Peter. So in the interest of time, we're just coming up to the half hour, so the timing seems to have worked well. Um, I'm going to wrap up this webcast. So listen, firstly, thank you very much, everyone, for attending this last webcast of our finance webcast series, and thanks to, also to those of you who listen to it on recording later. Um, a huge thank you goes out to Peter for his inputs today and also to the wider SEMA organization, you, Peter, for, for driving this research. It's extremely, extremely interesting and extremely useful, so a big thank you for that. It's um, fun to work on. It's interesting. Great. Um, so if anyone needs more information on this topic, please go to the uh, oracle.com webpage, which you can see there, www.oracle.com, or alternatively, please go to the uh, SEMA webpage, which is, again is shown there, www. CIMA, C -I -M -A global, dot com. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this overview of the key findings of the research. And just to reiterate, the search will be so soon available in a lot more detail. If you want, and if you want to know more, I suggest you, would, if you can, you can attend the Modern Finance Experience on Wednesday the 28th and Thursday the 29th of October during Oracle Open World if you're lucky enough to be in San Francisco and California at that time. Um, other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much again, and uh, bye for now.